Welcome to my YouTube channel where we demonstrate and discuss everything related to theatrical and entertainment production crafts. Please subscribe to get the latest updates, posts, and demonstrations. While I will focus primarily on safety in the shops and comprehensive training and operating procedures for tools and machinery, I'll also demonstrate and discuss practical applications like flat and platform construction, scene painting, and more. If you'd like to see something specific, please let me know in the comments. Once again, please subscribe and power up the alert bell to get the most up-to-date notifications about new content. So how do you know what size drill bit to use for pre-drilling? Pre-drilling means drilling a hole in the wood so that the wood doesn't split or to help with a particular task. Some people say use an eighth inch drill bit or a sixteenth inch drill bit and just use that for all your pre-drilling. I'm going to suggest a slightly different way to pre-drill. The first thing we need to do is determine what size diameter the screw shank is. And we can see that it kind of fit, almost fits into one eighth. It fits into 964 with a little resistance and it fits into 530 seconds most easily. We're going to use either the 964 or the 530 seconds for our drilling. If I'm drilling in from this piece of wood into that piece of wood, I really only need to pre-drill into the first piece of wood because I want the screw to actually pass through the first piece of wood, but I want the screw threads to bite into the second piece of wood. If my two pieces of wood are stationed like this, I don't need to pre-drill into this piece. This piece is not going to split unless it's really dry. This piece, since you're so close to the end of the wood, this is where you're going to split. If I don't pre-drill here, this wood is going to split, split, split wherever I put the screw in. So this is the piece that you want to pre-drill. And you want to pre-drill so that you don't drill into this piece because you want the screw threads to have as much biting power as possible. The two methods that we're discussing is one to use an eighth inch or even a sixteenth inch drill bit and pre-drill both. And that works just fine, but I think the better way to pre-drill is to pre-drill a hole in this piece of wood so that the screw moves freely through this piece of wood. It doesn't need to bite into this piece of wood, it only needs to bite into that piece of wood. If it's not too big of a diameter, the head of this is going to compress the two pieces of wood together. You can take your other piece of wood and you can draw a line because our pine is three quarters of an inch and we should be shooting for that center point of the three quarter of an inch. That's where we want to be. We don't need to crowd the edge. We don't want to crowd the inside or we're going to miss our piece of wood. So I want to put a drill there. I want to put a drill there. And I want to put a drill there. I also don't need to crowd this outside edge. You need to keep the drill straight. You don't want to be going left and right. If you do that, and especially if the bit is smaller, or especially if you're using that 16th inch bit, if you get partway through and you shift slightly, you're going to break that bit all the time. I can go up to number two gear for drilling. Number two speed. We drill the other two holes. Now, if we've drilled them right, our drywall screw should slide right in through there. And that works real well. Which brings us to the next question of what is the correct size of drywall screw for what purpose? This is a one and five eighths inch drywall screw. It's a little more than one and a half of an inch. Five eighths is another eighth inch bigger than a half because half inch is four eighths and four eighths is smaller than five eighths. The general rule that I use is whatever material I'm going through, I need to use a screw that's at least twice as long. This is three quarter inch pine. I need to use at least one and a half inch size drywall screw. They don't make one and a half, they make one and five eighths. So I'm going to use one and five eighths because 
one and a quarter, the next size down, is too small. I barely have two or three threads that are going to grip and what they're going to do when I over screw it, when I over tighten it, is that's going to strip out and nothing's going to hold. You go bigger than one and five eighths, it's a little bit overkill for this operation. You'll be doing things like this a lot, putting a piece of pine against another piece of pine. You'll be using other tools to do this too, and pneumatic drivers and things. But if you're building a platform, you're going to be using one by six and you're going to be doing this exact task. You want to tighten it down until all that gap goes away. And you want to tighten it down until the screw is flush or slightly below the surface. You don't need to drive, drive the screw halfway through the piece of wood. But you see the head of this screw is much bigger than the hole that I drilled. And I only drilled the hole into the first piece. So it's gripping really nicely into the second piece. I'm going to straighten this out a little bit so that I can put in my second screw. The other thing before you put in the second screw is that you want to have this first screw really snug and fit. If it's not really snug and fit, what that, if there's a gap there, then this screw is going to lock that gap in place and the second screw is going to reinforce that gap. And you're never going to be able to close that gap because all the screws are holding the two pieces of wood apart. So when you put the first one in, make sure the gap is gone and make sure that everything else is snug. And then when I do the second one, I'm going to take up all the rest of the gap. and there's no gap. Excellent. And the last one. And my three screws are flush. If my screw isn't flush, go ahead and put some pressure into it. Make it slightly below the surface. That's starting to be almost too much. We can also use the impact driver for tightening bolts with a socket. And the socket comes in a variety of sizes and the socket adapters come in a variety of sizes. This is identified by the diameter of the fitting. This is a quarter inch adapter. This is a three eighths inch adapter. And this is a half inch adapter. And all of the sockets come in a variety of sizes. This is a 7 sixteenths. You can see it's written on there 7 sixteenths and it has a 3 8 inch connector. So I will use the 3 8 inch adapter. The half inch adapter won't fit and the quarter inch adapter is too loose. 7 sixteenths is the size of socket you want to use for a quarter inch bolt. The diameter of the shaft of the bolt is a one quarter inch. The distance across the surfaces of the hex head are slightly bigger than that. And quarter inch bolts always have a 7 sixteenths nut or bolt head. This fits into the 7 sixteenths. Same thing with the quarter inch nuts they fit into the 7 16 socket. The three sizes you're most likely going to be using are the 7 16 for the quarter inch bolts and hardware, the half inch for the 5 16 bolts and hardware, and then the 9 16 for the 3 8 inch bolts and hardware. I've color coded our sockets by shank size. These are all color coded yellow, so they go in the yellow bins and they go, this one goes in the 7 16 bin, this one goes in the half inch bin, and this one goes in the 9 16 bin. White is color coded for the half inch socket and red is color coded for the quarter inch drive. All three of these sockets are 7 16 inch sockets. This one's for the smaller drive, this one's for the yellow one for the 3 8 inch drive, and this white one for the half inch drive. And then there's another drawer of metric sockets as well, color coded for the same three shanks. Put them back in the right bin, sort them out, put things away. We're going to put in the adapter. The little ball bearing just snaps in there and locks in. There are divots on any four sides, so it doesn't matter which side the little ball bearing is in. Pull out our bit. We put in our socket bit and now we take our lag screw or lag bolt goes by both names and we just go forward and it's starting to drive in.
what I did wrong here is I did not use a washer. If I keep doing this, this thing's going to sink down below the surface and it is going to go beyond the surface and I'll never be able to get it out. Now it's hot. It's very hot. We're going to drop that one and get ourselves a new one that's not hot. This time I'm going to use a quarter inch washer so that it stops where I want it to stop and I'm going to drill into a new place. I'm part way in, not complete. It will start to get a higher pitched sound as I get closer to the end. It's easy to overdrive the quarter inch bolts with this impact driver. It gets harder to do it with the larger ones, the half inch and the three eighths ones. Those two pieces are now lagged together. Using a cordless drill or impact driver for driving screws has become so ubiquitous that when presented with any screw of any kind, we automatically assume that we should be driving the head of the screw with a power tool. But this is not the case when you are using machine screws with nuts and washers. This happens so frequently with every new class of stagecraft students that I will likely be reposting this video regularly. You might need to take a machine screw and set it into the wood and tighten it with a bolt on the other side. This would be common if we were attaching a caster to the other side. Put your caster where it belongs and put it over here. The wood's kind of, this wood is kind of old and splitting. I'm going to mark where the four holes are. We know the diameter of these bolts is a quarter of an inch, right? It fits into the quarter inch. It does not fit into the 15th, 16th bit. It will also fit into the 1764th, the next size up. One of the things that happens if you drill a one quarter inch hole in wood, the wood is kind of expanding and contracting a little bit. It's got a lot of moisture in it. And if you drill the exact size in the wood, I guarantee that feeding this screw through is going to be a tight fit every time. If you're drilling into metal, you want to use the exact size bit because metal is, a, is less forgiving. It doesn't expand and contract. It doesn't have all the moisture content. If you drill a quarter inch hole in metal, it will be a quarter of an inch. If you drill a quarter inch hole in wood, it's always gonna be tight feeding your bolt through. You don't want to use a quarter inch drill to drill that hole. You want to use a 7 16 or possibly a 9 30 seconds. This bit is a 17 64ths. That's the next size up. And it's just one size after another. And the fractions are crazy until you're used to it. Put in my 17 64ths bit. You don't need to remember these numbers because you have this handy gauge. So you can always look at it and say, what's the next size up from one quarter of an inch? It's 17 64ths or 9 30 seconds. So I'm going to drill my four holes. And that one wanted to wander a little bit. If I wanted to, I could pre-drill a smaller hole so I don't drift. This drill bit is a little dull, and that's why it's called drifting like that. It's not staying where I want it. I've got four holes. They go all the way through. It's a little bit of tear out on the other, other, other side. That's also indicative of a dull blade, but it also is pretty common in the application. My caster is going to go on like this, and this is a common mistake of putting in the screw the wrong way. This type of head is designed to countersink into the wood. I can get my countersink bit and do a countersink in there like I would if I were drilling in masonite, or I can use an impact driver and this will be like magic. 
I'm gonna put all four of these in just to keep my, or at least two of them in to keep my, keep my machine in place. The other common mistake that people are going to do is that they will hold the nut with a wrench and tighten the screw with a screw bit. First of all, I'm using a number two screw bit, and this is a size 14 screw or quarter inch screw. And I need to use a number three bit, not a number two. So if I use a number two, which is the one that's most common, I'm gonna strip the heck out of that head. And then I won't be able to unscrew it and take it apart at strike. And second, we've got the magical impact driver with the 7 16 inch bit that fits the quarter inch nut. I'm going to get my number three screwdriver, I'm going to hold that in place. And I'm just going to tighten down. And I don't even have to countersink because the screw goes under the surface of the wood, just like that, just by holding the, the screw with the screwdriver. Now this one, I used an inch and a half screw and it interferes with my action of my caster. So what I actually need to do is I need to take that one and a half inch screw out and replace it with a one and a quarter inch screw. But I use the one and a half inch screw to give me that countersink. It's a process of doing things twice, but it does work. You could also countersink your head and do it once with the one and a quarter inch screw. It's one more tool, it's one more process, it's the same length of time, more or less, either way. If you go straight up with the one and a quarter inch screw, you're not going to have enough threads to catch on there. And uh, that is how you, uh, the proper way for attaching a caster to a piece of wood. After I get all four machine screws set and countersunk, I'll swap out the one and a half inch machine screws for one and a quarter inch machine screws. I could use the one and a quarter inch machine screw without the washer and then back the nut off after it's countersunk and then put the nut and washer back on and it would take about the same amount of time. Or I could use a countersink bit and prepare the top of the lumber for the machine screw before installing. Again, this would take about the same amount of time as the previous two options. A fourth option would be to get an angle grinder and cut the excess threads off beyond the nut. But that would make the machine screw no longer reusable. Still, it's a valid approach. Choose the way that works best for you and for the project that you are doing. You may want to use a bit adapter. These are designed to hold the bit and some of them have this other sliding sheath that allow you to hide the screw inside so you don't have to hold it with your fingers. You don't have to risk smashing your fingers. You don't have to risk getting your fingers cut up with the threads of the drill bit. This one has the shank that will fit the impact driver. So I'm going to use the impact driver for this one. I'm going to use a one and a quarter inch screw because if I use one and five eighths, it's gonna go through my two pieces of wood and into my counter. And I don't wanna ruin my counter. The screw goes in, is held in by the bit. You can slide this all the way to the forward. Little tip pointing out. You put it exactly where you want it. The theory is that you push down and it stopped, but I find that I don't know where the bit is and it's real easy to overdrive them and over sync them. So if you're using this adapter, you need to use it to get started on the screw. But then once you're nice and stable, you pull this back so that you can see where it goes and you can control it and only get it just as far as you want. This is an added feature to help you control your driving and make it easier for you to drive and not smash your fingers. I don't really use them because it gets in the way. I'd rather just see what I'm doing all the time rather than have it be part way hidden. But it does make it easier if you're not wanting to smash your fingers. We talked about the Torx head bit a little bit in our introduction. This is the Torx head bit. This is the T25. It, the Torx or the T25 has the six stars as opposed to the plus feature of the Phillips bit. And this is what a Phillips bit looks like and what a Torx bit looks like. 
I've started using these at home a lot, um, pretty much exclusively now. They tend to slip less. They, they just make it easier. Um, it even holds the screw better just by its own nature. Torx bits. There are a variety of bits that you can use for the drills and the impact drivers. Some of them will work in the impact drivers, not all of them. This one will only work in the drill. This is called a paddle bit or a spade bit because it's a regular shank, but it's got a flat paddle or uh, like a spade. A spade is a flat square shovel. So it's a paddle bit or a spade bit. This is a speed bore bit. It is a really an aggressive hole saw and it will bite through material really quickly. And the design of the bit grips and pulls the drill bit forward very aggressively. Very good for drilling holes. This is a 5 8 inch bit. This is also a 5 8 inch bit. They will both drill the same hole. They will just drill it differently. This is a cheaper bit. Obviously, if you're on a budget, you're going to get one of these. And this is a little more expensive bit. This can be a bit aggressive on the tear out on the back side. They, they both can be aggressive on the tear out. This is a hole saw set. This is a quick release version. This pulls back. This goes all the way in. And then when it's all the way in, it snaps forward and you can drill a hole with it. This has a larger shank on it. So this can only be used in a cordless drill. This won't fit in the impact driver. Hole saw. Paddle bit. Speed bore. This is also a hole saw. This is probably also five eighths of an inch. This is three quarters of an inch. You can't see it, but it's barely written there. This will also drill holes. This is an auger bit, and this is a different kind of hole saw. Many different ways to drill holes. For your classroom project, if you're doing the birdhouse, you're going to need to pull this kit out and find the appropriate size hole for your birdhouse. When you put things back, release the, uh, the parts and put them back in the case like that. I'm going to clamp my material to the table so it doesn't move while I'm drilling the holes. We'll start out with the speed bore. The speed bore is the fun one. Make sure I'm going forward, not reverse. There's our first hole with the speed bore. Very quick, very aggressive, very satisfying. We can't use this in the impact driver because it doesn't have the lock. So I'm gonna put it in a cordless drill. Make sure I'm at my highest torque setting, make sure I'm on my drill mode and make sure I'm on speed number two. You can do these hole saws in speed number one if you need a little bit more control. Sometimes speed number two can kind of get away from you. They sort of kicked there as it made its way through the hole into the other side. The drills tend to do that when you're drilling holes of this size with these types of bits. Two holes the same size. I think the paddle bit made a little less happy of a cut on the back side. This is a half inch chuck, so I need to open it wide. I need to make sure I have a drill that has a half inch chuck. Most of them only come with half inch chucks these days. There used to be some that would come with three eighths and maybe some of your cheaper Ryobi and other models might only have a three eighths inch jaw. That means they only open to three eighths of an inch, but you really need the four eighths or half an inch for most of your larger bits. <laughs> I'm going to trade that out. Try this one. I just bit through. Now the thing with these uh, hole saws is that they put the chunk of wood inside. So you have to pry that out either with a screwdriver and there's usually two holes. So you pry it out with a screwdriver. Or what I like to do when I'm doing repeated cuts with this tool is I won't put it all the way back in. I'll leave it out part way. 
so then I can pop it out and I use the drill bit, the pilot hole bit, to pop the wood out. And then I put it back in and I keep going because I'm doing several cuts like this. Just like that. It can get hot, be aware. Pop, uh, pop my wood out. And I'm ready for lots of repeated holes. These bits are sometimes called Forstner bits. That's a brand name and they will cut holes pretty aggressively too. They're designed for woodworking, fine woodworking, for cutting clean holes. Oh, I didn't make it all the way through. But it's still a pretty clean hole, you can see that. See if I can finish it off. It has a, lot, a little bit of a tear out on the back side. They all do uh, one kind or another. It looked like the speedboard bit had the least amount of tear out of the various types, but they're gonna be that way, differing between types of wood that you use, your setup, how you operate the tool. So there's gonna be a lot of variety. This isn't a scientific experiment saying that this one's the best one. Just this one turned out the best right now. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time with more technical theater content.